Hello, my name is Rick Thomas. I'm a faculty member in Sustainable Agriculture and Food Systems for Sterling College. I teach classes in draft animal power systems, applied forestry, and green woodworking. I'm excited to spend a few minutes describing our program. It's quite unique. I don't know of any other program in the United States that merges a sustainable ag degree with a minor in draft animal power systems. The program is designed to introduce students to cattle, horses, and mules in work environments. We start off with a breadth class that is focused strictly on driving principles. I'm currently located at our satellite campus in Henry County, Kentucky, where we are part of the Wendell Berry Farming Program. Here our stable consists of a team of mules, a workhorse, a team of oxen, and a pair of working steers. So during that first course, students are introduced to the driving principles associated with working cattle, working mules, working teams, working singles, working three abreast, all the different configurations uh, that are going to be useful as we progress through our curriculum. I also enjoy having young animals in the stable so that students can experience training and training systems. Once that good foundation is built, we put students into context. Uh, it's something I call teaching in context or using meaningful work to guide our curriculum. And so during their second semester, we'll begin to work in the forest. We'll begin to work in the fields perhaps mowing and picking up hay, and we'll work in the gardens. As we progress into our third semester, their skill set has improved to where they can do uh, more difficult maneuvers, uh, more difficult tactics are needed. So for example, we might be on a logging job where the ground is very steep and so we need to introduce uh, steep terrain logging strategies as an example. We are very interested in applying as much non-chemical no-till cultivation practices as possible in a market garden setting and so we are constantly trying to problem solve different ways that we can use our draft animals to maintain the soil health uh, in our garden environment. As we're out in the field uh, mowing hay or clipping pastures, being able to troubleshoot a faulty mowing machine is an, something that comes to mind as an advanced technique that these students need to master if they're going to get involved in draft animal farming. These three classes are progressive in nature. They build upon skill sets so that students are allowed to work through the program at their own pace. Even though we move together as a group, each student brings their own skill set and their own rate of learning. And so being a small group and being involved in the type of education that Sterling is known for which is very hands-on, very experiential, uh, we can make those changes so that those students can continue to move forward at a pace that's comfortable for themselves. The driving principles class and the applied power systems classes uh, are uh, core, but happening around the edges of those three courses are more specific classes in things like restorative forestry, crop production systems, holistic livestock husbandry, soils, plants, and microbes. So this larger 
educational platform is happening around this core of power, which from my perspective is this amazing opportunity for them to really explore draft animals as a key component to modern farming and forestry systems. Once students graduate, they find work as farriers because working, I'm a trained farrier and so I teach a farrier science class. So several students have gone on to pursue advanced work in farrier science and are now working as farriers. We have cattle hoof trimmers. We certainly have students who have graduated from the program who are working in the forest industry. We have farmers. Uh, we have many students who are employed at living history museums. I ask a question at the beginning of the first semester, which goes something like, what is the role of draft animals in 21st century farming or forestry? Something like that. And they answer it from a position of uh, newness, right? They don't, they don't have a lot of experience. And so there's a lot of romance that comes into that essay. I ask that very same question at the end of the two-year program. And the answers are very refined. Some of them look at draft animals and simply cannot imagine employing them on their farm. Others look at draft animals and can't imagine not having them on their farm. And so that is one of my favorite assignments, <laughs> uh, to be able to watch the progression of thought through the student's mind as they've gained some experience. They've, they've spent some time with these animals. They've learned what they can do and they've learned what they can't do. And it all comes back around to this notion of scale. And I think that's something that we talk a lot about here in, in our classes. When I'm talking about scale with students and this whole notion of right-sizing a farm so that draft animals can work both efficiently and profitably. I can't help but talk about the notion of pace and what it is like working at a human pace. Starting a farming career, which is actually what many of our students are doing. They have no background in farming. They're new to every aspect. They may have grown a kitchen garden. They've not done anything at scale. They've not done much at scale. They've not done too much uh, with forestry. And so this is all very early career. So the whole notion of pace is something that they don't have a lot of experience with yet. I find that working with draft animals puts a constraint, a welcomed constraint, on how much work we can do in a day. It is those limits that I enjoy exploring in our discussions. Are those limits bad? What does an agricultural system or a forestry system without limits look like? Well, that's not hard to investigate since it's our current system here in the United States. Something that strikes me every year when we take a person who has no experience working in the forest, let's say, and we take in simple tools such as an axe and a crosscut saw and a team of oxen, and we fell some trees 
and we do things with that wood. We work with those primary resources. We take those primary resources and we turn them into objects that we then use to make other things with. The process of creating and being able to think and hear one another work. The conversation that happens, the, the team, the sounds of the team, the yoke creaking, the chains dragging, the, the, the saw, it, it's, a, it's a harmony, it's a, it's a chorus of peacefulness in my mind that is something that I can't attain when I'm running powered machinery. And that's something that strikes me every single time is how students are um, able to hear the birds. They're able to observe nature. As we become more estranged from the natural world, it's these experiences which I think students are really, really hungry for. And why a place like Sterling College is so important right now. Um, a place where these, these, these ideas and these techniques and tactics are actually practiced and taken seriously. Along with the mechanics of driving and learning how to work in the woods or work in the fields or in the garden, in terms of machinery, hooking up to equipment, that sort of thing, it's... It, Something that's always going on is the, the husbandry side of our curriculum, which is learning how to select stock, uh, learning how to go to an auction and uh, choose an animal that is sound. Uh, the husbandry skills associated with the stable management, uh, the veterinary care that we can perform ourselves, all of that is a package that's happening around uh, these sort of more, I don't know, the higher glamour of, you know, harnessing and going into the woods and extracting logs. Well, there was a lot of work that had to be done to that horse before he was ready uh, to, to go into that work. So understanding nutrition, understanding animal care, um, diagnosing issues with your animal around uncomfortable yoke fit or a uh, bow bunch that's beginning to develop. Uh, being able to observe your animals and know them so well that you can tell just simply by the way they came into the barn that they're not quite right today. This is the kind of work that that students uh, really latch on to. Uh, they enjoy going to the woods and felling trees and extracting them, but I find they really enjoy the care of the animals. Uh, we speak about the word dignity uh, in, in, at our stable. We talk about dignity for all who come within. <clears throat> and it, it's this notion that our animals are our working partners, that they are important to us. And if something is important to you, you want to spend time with it. And if you spend time with something, well, you begin to show affection to it. And I think understanding that uh, these animals are, are working and there are working partners is one thing, uh, but on the other hand, being able to have some compassion uh, towards your animal and being able to understand that your animal has good days and bad days. These are all very important skills. I think Something I've seen over the last now 21, two years has been this, the fact that the experiences that students have while they're in this program are, are truly transformative. They may never experience draft animals again in their lives, and most won't, but during their time here, they were, their identity was completely intertwined with the barn. They were completely aware that they had a badge that they wore that said, 
I am a draft animal person. I smell like cattle. Um, I have horse hair all over my body in the spring. Uh, that's important. It's important, I think, for young people to develop an identity and to experience something that's bigger than themselves. And I have just stood back and watched people mature in front of my eyes as a function of working with these draft animals here at, at the college. 